started Skilled Creative in 2017, and we've used this kind of slogan for voice in the conversational AI industry that voice is a program, not a project. And that just so easily flows into this generative AI space. If if you're looking at it from an individual use case perspective, just a slice of the conversation, you can have some short-term successes, but you need to really step back and think about it holistically, about what are the different touch points that our organization might end up leveraging and start being strategic early on so that you don't have to redo the work over and over and over again across multiple silo teams. My name is Brandon Kaplan. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer at Journey. Um, had an agency that was previously called Skilled Creative uh, that, that I founded. And, and we're an agency working in the innovation space. And so whereas some of the previous speakers were platforms themselves, we, are, we consider ourselves curators of technologies and, and curators of platforms. And so as this generative AI space has continued to evolve, um, you know, we've been scouting the entire landscape. And we generally, as an agency, work with Fortune 500 brands. And we're working with them on a number of different emerging technology initiatives, brand marketing, commerce initiatives. And they'll come to us and they'll say, you know, th this is such a new, exciting space. Um, what do we do? Like, where do we start? What's important to us? Help us figure it out. And so we often will go through these in-depth kind of educational discovery focused processes. And in that process, we, we do things like round tables, educational sessions, keynotes. We do in-depth interviews with stakeholders. We look at competitive analysis. It's, it's a really broad-based discovery, but one of the things that we always do is we bring together as many different executives as possible across the organization who represent different disciplines in the organization. And we try and, we try and get them into one room for as long as possible. And we introduce them to a suite of platforms. And the, the purpose of that is that if you're uh, a product person, you're probably spending more time in you know, visual tools like MidJourney or Runway ML or other kind of image generator platforms. If you are a copywriter or a social media manager, you might be spending more time in text platforms like ChatGPT. If you're uh, on the data team, you might be working more on code and data systems. And, and you might be siloed from other folks in your team. And the concern is that a you know Fortune 500 company that has thousands of employees over time might just build hugely siloed systems where everybody has a whole suite of subscriptions that they're running independently. No one's talking to each other about how those might integrate with each other. Should we be picking very specific tools that meet the needs of our organization more broadly? Are they tying to our backend APIs, databases, CMSs, CRMs? And so we'll come in and we'll introduce this kind of broad spectrum of executives to a suite of tools in a sprint. And by doing that with people from different disciplines, it opens up this whole discussion of looking at these tools through different people's perspectives on your teams. It opens up discussions about excitement, concerns, legal considerations, rights and use considerations, ethical considerations. And it really drives this kind of 360 viewpoint. And then from there, we can move into, all right, well, now that we've looked at this from unique perspectives, how can your organization leverage these tools? So uh, I'll walk you through this, this video and I'll, I'll kind of talk over it. Um, and, and this is kind of where we start from. So our team, uh, our team of strategists and account people at, at Skilled Creative Now Journey, we've looked at probably 600 platforms at this point across, you know, we, we've broken them out into these eight categories text, image, video, audio, code, model, data, and avatar. And within each of these kind of slices of the pie, there's dozens, if not hundreds of platforms. And some of those platforms are building their own proprietary technology. Other platforms are using APIs of other existing companies and they're fine tuning them or they're tweaking them for a very specific use case. And so we're kind of scraping the universe. We're cherry picking platforms that we think are, are really meaningful, that have good teams, that have quality APIs that have good support and could be used in kind of this workflow that we're talking about. And then we also look at what's going on from like a big picture enterprise perspective. So we always love to show this visual on the right-hand side, which 
tells the story of, okay, well, Microsoft has this exciting partnership with OpenAI. You might look at that and say, this is, this is great. You've got a big tech organization investing in this fast moving disruptive organization. All these features are gonna make it into Microsoft products. But behind the scenes, this is also just a cloud computing conversation. And so Microsoft is gonna press OpenAI to process all of their generation and image storage and code storage and all of that on Microsoft's cloud. So there's this whole like cloud conversation going on. At the same time, we're all talking about what are these great tools that we can all leverage. And so we've, we've looked at all of these different tools. This is a really quick, like two and a half minute snapshot. These workshops can take an hour. We'll, we'll take, you know, 20 executives. We'll break them into five teams of four. Um, and we'll run them through half a dozen or a dozen platforms doing all different types of interactions that, that relate to their business from product design and marketing and data analysis, consumer insights, um, data modeling, go-to-market strategies, creating sales presentations. And so we've, we've cherry-picked a couple of the more well-known platforms that you might have seen, ChatGPT, Dream Studio, Bria, Ad Creative, and Tome. And I'll show you like a very quick snapshot of, you know, this is a representation of you could have a group of five executives sitting with each other from across different disciplines within a Fortune 500. And over the course of a kind of a prompted session, we'll run them through. And so this is a video that I'll talk over that's a kind of a flash version of that. And so we'll start in a platform that everybody knows, um, you know, ChatGPT. And we'll put in, is the video running? Yeah. We'll put in kind of just a, a human insight, right? Like people are, love cereal, but they're looking for healthier cereals. This all looks familiar to everybody. You know, ChatGPT is really powerful. It can start business ideas for us. It can come up with product ideas. We're prompting it in a way that it's giving us all of the information back that we need to move on to the next chain in this kind of production flow. And so now we're asking, all right, well, this is good insight of creating marketing materials. Well, let's design product or let's design package. And so now ChatGPT, as many of you have probably played with, is really good at kind of confidently, there might be some hallucinations behind some of the, the recommendations, but logo designs. And you can see here, we've even prompted for, you know, give us color codes that align with the methodology and the consumer insights behind this product innovation. So we'll grab some of the, the content that's pulled out. We'll have our human team go in and pull some of the, the snippets out. We'll move on to the next segment of that workshop. And this is an instance where we can go into logo design. We're pulling little, little bits of content out from the first platform that we all know moving it into a platform like Mid Journey or Dream Studio or pick, pick your favorite platform. And we're going in and we're just live creating logos and packaging. And this is now introducing to these executives how you can start in one platform. Right now, you have to pull from one platform, push it into another platform, unless you're building some type of API connected middleware. Now we've got all these great options. Now we move into Bria. If you're not familiar with Bria, really cool platform where you can create dynamic ads, dynamic visuals, and it can change things like background images. It can change uh, people's faces on ads to localize them to different regions, but it's a really powerful, dynamic, addressable media platform. Then we can take some of the assets created in Bria, drop them into a platform like Ad Creative AI, grab some copy from the original chat GPT, grab some of the image assets from Dream Studio, grab some of the dynamic images that are generated in Bria and move them over to Ad Creative. Ad Creative will take some of the work that we've already done and then do some kind of AI focused generation of its own and pop out you know, a handful of, you can grade these yourselves, but the AI here is grading them at 199. So this is moving really quickly. We can now go into a platform like Tome and take a lot of that copy that we generated along the way. And in a couple of minutes, create a sales presentation. So this is showing uh, a product team, a marketing team, a go-to-market specialist team, um, an analytics team, a human insights team, and a Fortune 500 brand, how there's two sides of the coin. You can take these tools. I think that's the end of the video. Um, you can take these tools. And in theory, the AI can help you originate or scale these individual components of your business processes. In theory, in a vacuum, 
there's a future where all of these platforms can connect to one another in what we're calling like an AI conveyor belt. And a lot of the work that we do with our clients subsequent to these sessions is we really then start to drill down on what types of interactions and assets would they need, what platforms qualify for the type of work they want to do, and is there a back end that we can connect these platforms automatically by instead of us having to go in manually and edit, pulling it out of one platform, putting it into a CMS, going into that CMS, pulling it out of the CMS, automatically moving it into the next platform, leaving room throughout the process for what we're calling the human editor phase, because no brand is going to just let AI create all the way through at this stage. Um, and so this is just a really quick snapshot of these, these sessions that we do that can take an hour with a large group of executives as part of a bigger educational process. Um, but to introduce multidisciplinary AI use cases to broad teams, so they start thinking as an organization versus an individual with an AI subscription. So Brandon, quick snapshot. I really, I really like that. And so it, like what you're doing is you're taking this idea instead of a task, because mm -hmm. largely what we think about in terms of software solutions is they solve tasks. What you're doing is you're doing a process that spans a number of functions. Yeah. And it's just a different way that people need to be thinking about it because every one of those companies is going to use one of those pieces, multiple of those pieces. But you think about, okay, if, if it's a process, but I have all these silos again, how do I, I once again have a coordination problem? Right. Yeah. And, and we've, it's funny, like, started Skilled Creative in 2017, and we've used this kind of slogan for voice in the conversational AI industry that voice is a program, not a project. And that just so easily flows into this generative AI space. If, if you're looking at it from an individual use case perspective, just a slice of the conversation, you can have some short-term successes but you need to really step back and think about it holistically about what are the different touch points that our organization might end up leveraging and start being strategic early on so that you don't have to redo the work over and over and over again across multiple siloed teams, which when we talk to these companies, anyone that works with, you know, big, big brands, siloed data communications teams is like the biggest issue that causes bottlenecks. And so this type of an exercise um, and then subsequent kind of discovery process helps prevent that. Yeah. So when you're talking to the big brands and you're, you're saying, Hey, you can make this more productive, this more productive, and you can do this program and they can be more productive together. And they sit there and that's, that's probably eye opening for, yeah. for some of them. But what are they worried about? Like, what are they saying? Oh, wait a second. Or what's their next question? There's so many things they're worried about, right? There, there, there's excitement. Um, that also depends on if there's a, one of their lawyers are in the room or not, but, um, uh, a lot of concern about their own IP, right? Like we have, we have media publishing clients who are very fearful of connecting their, their IP to these tools and their IP getting sucked in, uh, as, as training data. And now some of the platforms are addressing that head on. So certainly protecting their IP is a consideration. They also don't want to be caught up in a storm of them stealing other people's IP because these are large public companies that have good and bad press days and they don't want to get caught in, in a storm. And then there's, there's just a lot of discussion around concern and excitement in how do they use these tools in meaningful ways that are not distractions, transparently, that are not them creating their own job loss. And people trying to figure out how do they use these tools to improve their businesses processes, um, improve their job and career path, that they can be the manager of these AIs while navigating kind of a, a minefield of, uh, of ethical and legal and rights and use considerations. And you just mentioned that, that rights and use a couple of times there. And there's, yeah. a, there's a question from Michael Hartman in the audience today. How does it impact IUN? IP ownership of the generated materials, particularly in trademark and copyright. And, it's, and there's two ways that this happens. One is potentially grabbing someone else's IP or copyrighted material and actually yeah. using it in your branded material, which is problematic because these companies are big targets for lawsuits. Yeah. Uh, but then there's this other thing about your IP and branded content getting out there and being used by others. Yeah, and I, I think it goes 
as you mentioned, it goes both ways. Like a lot of our media publishing clients are really concerned about their, their IP being pulled in. Um, and so we've directed them towards platforms that are very clearly state. Like I think OpenAI changed their policy that you have to opt into your data being used versus reversing, you have to opt out. So which is, a, that's a good movement. Um, so there's a lot of platforms that are kind of protection forward. Um, and then obviously we're working with their compliance and legal teams to vet everything. And then the other consideration is, you know, there's a lot of chatter about, well, is it stealing or is it learning just like humans learn? It's looking at inspiration and predicting what might happen. It's not literally taking a slice of a piece of artwork or copy. It's a tricky spot. So some brands are being very cautious. Some brands are leaning in. Coca-Cola, you can see through their OpenAI and Bain partnership is leaned in. JP Morgan Chase has banned their teams from using it. Um, so there's extremes on the spectrum. Um, but uh, this is a probably another session, but I think that this might be what cr actually creates the resurgence of blockchain or the surge of blockchain in that maybe we can't protect creatives going backwards, but if copy and art and creative assets are backed with blockchain starting now moving forward, you can have those micro attributions and we could actually know through blockchain. So that's another webinar for another discussion. Yeah, sure. Um, but there's some some smart thought going on around what happens going forward Absolutely. and people yeah. are being cautious moving back. Yeah, provenance. I mean, we talked about that in the, like the first presentation. It's like one of the things to think about. Well, so we need to wrap this up, but yeah. you showed that nice diagram showing the different types of technology categories. And we talked about like this integration of processes, but like if you think about the space and you think about the technologies or you think about specific solutions or whatever it might be, What's getting you you personally most excited? What is it like? What is like a, an atomic level thing that you think is just amazing? For me, uh, this isn't atomic level. This is like the the opposite. But it's it's changing people's perceptions as this is not a scarcity set of technologies. This is an abundance set of technologies. If you do not look at this as something that's going to steal your job, look at this as something that's going to make your job better, more scaled. It's opening up at a micro level to me. Since I work in this kind of creative marketing ad field, um, there's barriers to entry, right? You have to have either come from a certain school or worked for a certain company or have access to certain tools. If you've got a great creative mind, there's, there's no reason that you can't be a prolific creator right now. Um, and so I love that how this is just opening up creativity to everyone. And I think we're going to see really exciting companies and brands and products emerging by people leveraging these tools. Whereas before they might not have entered the conversation because there were barriers to entry. Um, so for me, it's this like abundance accessibility conversation. That's really cool. Um, and I'm excited to see what people invent. I mean, LinkedIn, if you, it's just like a daily you know, brain melt on like what people are coming up with. It's pretty cool. I know it's so great. It's, I, I don't, I feel like it, we haven't seen this much like real-time innovation since the web sort of 97 to 99. And uh, it, it part of it is just the web was very accessible to people, not as accessible as some of these tools are because all, there was still infrastructure being built out, but it was very accessible. And then these AI tools are just so accessible. So people are just saying, hey, I can try this, I can try that. And there's this the spirit of yes and, right? So people know right. this from like improv, like I've interviewed a lot of people for the podcast who have that background. It's not about either or, it's about yes and. And they're just like, people's like, oh, that's pretty cool. You just did that. You know, what if we did this? Even yeah. if it's like totally impractical and no one will ever use it, they're like, yes, this is the type of innovation cycle. It's yeah. really fascinating. And there's this data point, you and I have probably discussed this, but I think, you know, what comes out of economic downturns is great innovation and new kind of uh, chapters in our story. And during 2000, the 2008 downturn, things like Airbnb and Uber, those companies were invented, right? We're living in a time unfortunately, where there's this mass layoff going on, right? There's announcements this week by Facebook and Disney. For every one of those people that are getting laid off, there's this pressure, either A, they go and they find another great job, and hopefully they do. But there's also a group of people who might might take the opportunity and say, okay, this is it. Like this, this is my sign. I'm going to go create something. And there's never been a time that if you have something burning inside of you that you want to create something, that there's not there's better tools now than there ever have been. 
And so I think we're going to see some really exciting companies and categories and channels emerge out of this because of all these smart people entering the work kind of open workforce and they're leveraging these tools. So I think it's going to be an exciting next few years and, uh, and uh, seeing these other platforms on the, on the session today, give me even more hope. All right. Great. Brandon Kaplan, how should people follow up with you? Uh, you can reach out, I think, hi at skilled creative uh, or hello at journey.world. <laughs>